Hello everybody! I hope you guys are doing pretty good today, and I also hope you're ready for the continuation of the Survivor tutorial series today. I hope you're ready to learn how to heal, because we're learning about Cheryl, who is, in my opinion, the best healer to start with, because she is able to heal the team more effectively, in my opinion, than the other two healers. She has a larger range of healing when she drinks the sodas, and she also has a larger burst of healing than the rest of the healer squad, which is why I think that she is kind of an easy mode for newer uh, healers, but she isn't as good as combat, and she's not invisible like Pablo, so the other two do have some things going for them, but I think that she is generally seen as the best healer because she she can put out the most actual healing, and she's also the only healer who can... Well, I don't want to say that, because Ash can also heal without resources, but she's more effective at healing without resources than Ash, who only heals like 25 points. Not too perfect. But definitely, I think if you're new to healing, or if you are new to the game and you wanted to be a healer, Cheryl's definitely the best bet to start with, because she is able to put out a lot of healing points. Especially once you level her to full, in the beginning she's a little rough, but you can kinda do a little more with her than you can with the other two in my opinion. But before we get into her, I want to remind you guys to subscribe. It's totally free to you. And you know, give the video a like so that more people can see it, and then you don't have to worry about Cheryl running off in the <laughs> in your solo queues as much. Cheryl's active ability is called Healing Touch, and this causes her to put a first aid kit on the ground, which will heal anyone in a certain radius, which is very visible, to collect 60 healing per second for 6 seconds, and the cooldown on this is 120 seconds. Sorry, I haven't been saying the cooldowns in the past videos, but, you know, they're kind of subject to change anyway. This used to be a, a lot... It, it used to be a lot easier because it used to only have a 90 second cooldown, but they nerf healers a lot, so... <laughs> it, I hope it doesn't go up, but it, you know... You never know. This is a good skill to use when you're maybe at an objective and you see a lot of people need heals. A lot of the time you will want to save resources like shimps and all of that so that you can more effectively keep heals on people. So it may be a good option if people are a little low but not like in the red, like you don't need to immediately heal them, to tell everyone like, hey, I'm gonna put down a heal on the book and then heal everyone. It's pretty good for that. Pretty good for top-ups because it doesn't use any resources. So like if you finish the pages or the the dagger, you can tell everyone like, hey, come to me. I'm going to top up everybody around the chest where the, the objective finishes so that we can top up so I don't have to heal you with a coke. Sorry, I call the shemp's coke sometimes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a good way to save resources. I think it's smarter to use this more often than sodas because the sodas are you know a very valuable resource sometimes the game doesn't like to give them to you her second passive ability is called a cola coaster this allows her to carry more colas at the start of the game she starts with one extra one in her inventory and i think it allows her to carry two more than the other survivors yeah yeah, yeah. It, it allows her to carry up to eight instead of to six like the other two, which is crazy because if you build her in the way that you start with as many colas as possible, you can start with four colas and then you can get four more, which is a lot. But you can also use them up a lot, so d don't waste them, you know? Cheryl's level 10 ability is called Contact Courage, and it makes it so drinking as shimps will partially reduce the fear of nearby teammates. This sounds good, but it's really not. It 
she's not really good at being a fear reducer. That's definitely Evil Dead 1 Ash's ability. He's more of the fear reducer than Cheryl is. But, I, I mean, it is nice. She drinks a Coke and you get you get 25 less fear. It, 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 it's a nice little little boost if you really need it, but it's nowhere near as good as Evil Dead 1 Ash's active or Army of Darkness Ash's potion. It, it, it's kind of just like a little thing. It's, it's not much. Basically, what I'm saying is I wouldn't waste a Coke just to reduce fear, because 25 is not nearly enough. And then her level 25 ability is called Contact Healing. And this makes it so when you drink a Shemps, you'll do more healing. I know this confuses a lot of people because it's worded really horribly. It says when you drink a Shemps Cola, nearby teammates will also gain health, which is a skill that literally every support has. But it basically means that you'll all gain more health than the other supports would give. So she gives 100 health on, on every Cola instead of less than 100. I don't know what the actual base healing is. And from what I've heard, she also has a, a higher range of healing. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's an intended, but she can heal up to 16 meters away instead of, instead of like six. So weapons I would use for Cheryl. She's pretty flexible. I mean, you really can go any way you want with this because she's not really a damaged person. I like to use the Lumberjack Axe so that I can do some damage, but I wouldn't use one unless there's warriors that aren't using it, if that makes any sense. But if there's uh, maybe a leader who doesn't need it, or uh, I would give it to Cheryl before I gave it to a hunter because she can do more damage with it than a hunter can, because hunters get the reduced melee damage. But she is not bad with the lumberjack axe. You can also use really anything. The hunting knife after blue is actually really good. She can iframe on it after one hit and she can do a finisher on it after four hits I think. So after blue rarity the hunting knife is insane but it also turns you into a force to be reckoned with when you get possessed because the fucking hunting knife is so fast and hard to deal with. But yeah those, those are the two I would really work with. I, I, other than that you kind of just pick up what you can as long as the, the melee characters aren't using them. In terms of guns, a real favorite of mine is is the hunting rifle. It's one of my favorites to use on both Annie and Cheryl. It's just such a good gun. It does a lot of damage on headshots if you can make the headshots. And it doesn't use too much long gun ammo, so if there is a hunter using long gun ammo, you can still be more of a pouch, kind of like AOD Ash, where he only uses a bit of ammo per game. However, if you do have multiple people using long ammo, I would also recommend the revolver because it does do pretty significant damage on headshots and you won't have to use that uh, ammo type. You can also use a saw gun for dismemberment. Not a bad choice if you're going against like a warlord or Elagos or something, it's not a bad choice, but those are definitely the choices I would make for weapons. Anything really works with her, healers don't have to do as much damage, so they're pretty good in the weapons department. So here's the build I use with Cheryl. I, I don't have like two builds that I would use with Cheryl. I, I think this is my most common one. Getting the time reduction on Cheryl is really nice. I also put seeing stars in there for some balance bar damage because you kind of, you want to be able to open your own finishers in case you need to get an iframe so that you're not really getting screwed. Of course, you want to go into Shemps Plus because you want to get as much healing out of her as you can. And industrial strength is really important in my opinion because you don't want to die as much. You are going to be getting tunneled quite a lot. So having industrial strength is pretty important. Of course, I went for max shemps. This, this makes it so you start with four and you get up to eight once you're maxed out. I think this is amazing. I didn't go too much into amulets. I felt like going too far in amulets would have been a little bit of a waste because the way I play healer, I know a lot of people are different. They think that, that healers should be giving buffs with amulets. I do too, to a degree, but I think amulets are more attuned to warriors. 
I, I think they should take higher priority on amulets than the rest of the team. At, at least if they're like Henry who has more of a shield and is the tank, or if it's AOD Ash who actually does damage with amulets. But if you really wanted to, you could probably take a few points and put them into amulets. If maybe you don't have a, a warrior in your comp, then you can use them on your team. I also put three into the map finding one just because sometimes it can come in clutch. I, I didn't know what else to put it into. You can kind of take those two points. You can put them in the, the amulets if you wanted to. But I, I just put them in there just so you can find it a little easier because it gets a little weird, especially when it's in the swamp or like, uh, like Fairview. So you can find the map easier, but you could easily put those into extra amulets if you wanted to. And then uh, the real important one is the time perk fast forward. So 10% on fast forward is amazing, very helpful, especially if you got a leader on the team who also has fast forward. Chef's kiss, amazing stuff. So if you wanted to, you could put some points into Artful Dodger, but I don't think Artful Dodger actually adds any dodges. I just think it makes it so you can dodge a little sooner after using your two dodges. I don't think it's going to be as helpful as it could be because... Yeah, I don't know. Cheryl's a rough run. She she gets tunneled a lot. So basically, as Cheryl, I think a good idea for a little bit of gameplay is to uh, run away most of the time, honestly, because you're going to get tunneled a lot of the time. So really what you can do is just run away from the killer, keep yourself alive, because if you're alive, you can keep the team alive, which is way more helpful than you doing damage honestly because there are two classes that can do damage way more effectively than you can so yeah honestly just keep yourself alive don't worry about balance barring enemies or being like super super high dps just just stay alive that's all you can do. Stay alive so that you can keep everybody else alive. And then tips for healing, I'd say try to only use Shemps when people are low instead of using them when people are... Like, don't... Try not to use Shemps to top people off. I feel like you should only top off with her active because she's really resource dependent. I don't think you should put too much into healing everybody who's low. I feel like healing should be like a clutch thing or like, oh, you're in the red, I should definitely heal you right now. But yeah, also for amulets, let the warriors use some amulets, honestly. It's annoying when they use them before they have full uh, amulet power, so if they do that, you can kind of be like, hey, dog, don't just let me do it, honestly. Times that you should be using amulets are probably before, like, big fights. I wouldn't use them just to use them. You should probably use them at the objective, at dagger and pages just so that everybody has a little bit of a shield on them. Sometimes if I find an amulet on the ground and the warriors are good on shields, I'll like pop one for the leaders and hunters and then I'll pick it up just so I stay full, but I'd usually only use it at the start of the pages and dagger and then like at the start of the end fight with the dark ones. I wouldn't use them too often other than that. I feel like you should just let the warriors hit themselves up with amulets. And then I, I, I honestly feel like that's all the tips I can give. I feel like she's a pretty straightforward character to play. Healing is kind of hard. It's more based on intuition than, than like anything you can really teach. I, I can't really tell you exactly when to heal because there's going to be nuanced moments where it's just a good idea to heal. Like sometimes there's an abundance of shemps and you feel like, okay, it would be better to top us off now and just pick up this shemps in front of me since I'm full than it would to like leave it here in case we come back to it later because we're probably not going to. So it, it, it's definitely a role that's based more on intuition and you'll learn better how to heal as you play more than you'll learn from any tutorial I could give you because it the only tutorial I could really give you is press up on the d-pad to drink a shemps and press right on the d-pad to take an amulet that's really all I can do what I can say is use your light a lot when you're looting because you could pop a shemps out of thin air that's always really helpful you always want more shemps so 
Yeah, other than that, I think that's really all the, t the tips I can give. Subscribe to the channel if you like this, and if you like learning about the characters, and like the video, and have a good rest of your day. Good night, everybody!